It's one of the strangest careers in modern football. A star for Chelsea and Brazil, he left European football for good in 2016 and then headed for China during the peak of his career and never returned. So, what did happen to Oscar? In December 2016, the Chinese Super League was entering its golden age. Paulinho, Ramirez, Ezequiel Levetsi, Javinho, Hulk, Barak Yilmaz, and Jackson Martinez were all in the league, and would soon be joined by Carlos Tevez, Axel Witzel, Javier Mascherano, and Yannick Carrasco. And then Oscar, who was midway through his fifth season at Chelsea and had 48 Brazil caps. He was 25 years old, just coming up to his prime. Seven years later, all of those players have either retired or departed, but Oscar, now 32, is still there. He's just won the fourth league title of his career, but has not added to those 48 Brazil caps. So, why would a footballer of Oscar's talent swap the Champions League for relative obscurity? And why, even if he felt compelled to make that decision, would he not return to Europe after a few years to try to play his way back into the Brazil team? And it is worth remembering just how good Oscar was. He exploded onto the Brazilian scene with Internacional in 2011 earning a move to Chelsea in 2012 and becoming a guaranteed starter for the Brazilian national team until 2014. He won the Premier League under Jose Mourinho in 2015, but like most Chelsea players, he suffered a drop-off the following season. When Antonio Conte arrived at Sanford Bridge in 2016, Oscar was pushed towards the periphery and began to consider his options. Atletico, Juventus, Inter and neighbours AC Milan were among the suitors, but the only proposal Chelsea accepted was from China. Shanghai SIPG, who changed their name to Shanghai Port in 2021, paid a reported 60 million euros for Oscar. His wages were said to be in the region of 24 million euros a year after tax. Reports at the time estimated that to be a 400% pay rise. It made him one of the best paid players in world football. China has incredible financial power and sometimes makes offers that are hard to refuse. Oscar conceded in an interview with football media outlet Copa 90 in 2017. And there is a cultural context to consider. Like so many Brazilian footballers, Oscar grew up poor. His father died in a traffic accident when he was three. His mother, Sueli, raised Oscar and his two sisters alone, making ends meet by selling clothes from her home. Football was salvation. Brazilian footballers often end up supporting huge networks of relatives and friends. How much is enough to guarantee their comfort for generations to come? Well, it is to Oscar's credit that he was transparent about this. All football players want to earn money to help their families, he said in that Copa 90 interview. When I made the decision to come to China, I was thinking more of my family than my career. At that stage, however, Oscar seemed set on it being temporary, expressing the hope that he would return to Europe within a few years. But he never did. Oscar renewed his contract in December 2019, signing on for five more years. And it was well-timed. A month later, the Chinese government imposed an individual salary cap of 3 million euros a year for foreign players in the CSL. Oscar, though, was still on an annual salary of 24 million euros. The cost is that Oscar has won two CSL titles, but barely anyone outside Asia has seen him in action in seven years. A footballer who started every Brazil game at the 2014 World Cup has not had a sniff of a call-up since he left Chelsea. When I accepted the offer from China, I knew that I would be out of the spotlight and out of the Brazil team, Oscar said. It took me a while to accept that. Whenever I failed to make the squad, I would look at the list of players called up. I knew I was better than some of them. Chiche, who coached Brazil between 2016 and 2022, did select players from CSL clubs during that period. Paulinho and Renato Augusto were regulars, but they'd both worked with Chiche previously, unlike Oscar, who felt his move counted against him. There's a big prejudice against those who play in China, he said. It shouldn't be like that. People look down on players just because they're here. Portuguese manager Vitor Pereira was in charge at Shanghai SIPG between December 2017 and December 2020. He is well placed to explain the impact that Oscar had on the team and on Chinese football as a whole. When he was in form, he could transform games, Pereira tells The Athletic. Sometimes in China, players try to counteract natural ability with aggression, so he often had to deal with that, but he had superlative quality. You also need a strong personality to understand the limitations of your teammates and help them to grow. If you go there with the right attitude, you'll make friends and help others improve. And that's what Oscar did. He's done so much for the club over the years. 
Oscar has said that numerous clubs outside China have made contact with him over the recent years. Brazilian giants Flamengo offered to take him on loan in 2023 during the Chinese off-season, but Shanghai declined the offer. There was also interest from Barcelona a year earlier, but that came to nothing too. Barring a surprise move in January, it now seems inevitable that Oscar will see out his contract at Shanghai Port, which runs until the end of the 2024 Chinese season next November. And then what? With my body and my style of play, Oscar told Brazilian website UOL, I think I have a great chance of returning to play for a big club in Europe. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Oli Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. With the latest transfer news and insight on every Premier League football story that matters, TheAthletic.com puts you inside football. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.